Now then, how are you? This is Beyond the Block, my weekly show. And one thing I want to get going back again in every single house in England is the traditional Sunday roast. But what I think's happened over the years is people have just got bored with beef, pork, lamb. So I want to show you my signature roast, which I do with my own little twist. And as ones I've done in the past have gone down really well. So this week I'm going to show you my bacon beef whole grain mustard roast. Check this out. So what I want to talk to you about this week is my bacon beef whole grain signature Sunday roast. We're going to use a sirloin cut from a commercial top quality sirloin roast. One I've sourced from Robert Pearson's. The sirloin comes from obviously the back of the cow. We're going to use centre cuts, all trimmed up. And the reason I want to do that is I want you to try and, this is a type of beef that you can cook quickly to go pink, or you can cook thoroughly to cook right through. Personally, I like it cooked pink. It's top quality, restaurant quality. You could get a larger piece of more commercial beef like top side or silver side, but I think if you're going to purchase a signature roast from me, let's go for quality all the way. As we go on in this, uh, in, in this show, we'll, we'll show you some bigger, different joints that take longer to cook. But this will cook in no time whatsoever. You know, you want to be checking this after an hour and 10, an hour and 20. It's aged for about 14 days. It's done have to be aged as long as what you do, something that you're going to steak. Because obviously this is a joint. We're gonna, once you're staking them down, you need to age them a bit more because you want them super, super tender. Not that this will be tough, but this is for a roasting job. We're also going to use the dry cured bacon. Now, if you can imagine, bacon is made from sirloin of pork. Can you see how they're both same shape? So every animal has the same structure, really. The stand, same. You get just different cuts of it, different things. But bacon is generally made from sirloin of pork, which is then cured with salt and made into bacon. Simple as that. We're going to encrust this beef in some whole grain mustard, wrap it in bacon, and uh, I'll show you fruit process now. And what you should get when you're finishing product is the saltiness of the bacon running through your whole grain mustard, which then runs into your beef, and you get flavor all the way through. That's how it should work. So let's just have a crack it and see how we go on. So what I'm gonna do, first of all, I'm gonna pierce it all over. And it, it doesn't have to be done in any set of uniform way. I'm more interested that the flavour from the bacon and the whole grain mustard is going to get right into your beef. Some people might want to add some butter on top as well. That's up to them. I'm going to put a bit of this Himalayan salt on. Don't have to be Himalayan salt. It can be any type of salt you want. And then it's as simple and as brutal as this because we are rustic. We're not. We do these by hand. It's not something that we've got a factory set up to do. This is why we can only do so many per month, but we'll keep them going. I'm gonna try and do it so I don't get it on edges because I want it to run straight through it. Now, you could use extra lean bacon if you wanted, but I believe you want something with some fat on that's gonna uh, give it that taste going straight through. This isn't the it's certainly not bad for you, but there's no point in having it super healthy. She won't get a body like mine. I'm gonna do both sides. This bacon's so good. Dry cured bacon's very, very good. A lot more expensive, but it does do a cracking job. Now, all, it's as simple as this. All I'm going to do is tie that on now. Bit of pressure now, the old butcher's slip knot. Here we go. Used to do these down market. If they want in the line, that was it. He used to cut them off and you got a right rollicking. Won't overdo it with string for you because you want to be taking that off, don't you? You don't want to make it in loads and loads in. If you're doing a brisket, they, they have to be a centimetre between them. Because Eddie B used to say so, that's why. <laughs> but, Absolutely no reason whatsoever, but if he said that's what you did, then that's what you had to do, end of. So 
So what you should be left with there is a sirloin roast, the final piece of meat once the bacon's added should weigh 1.3 kilos. In my opinion, I'd be, let, don't forget when you do your Sunday roast, right? People get it out of the fridge and put it into the oven. Do not do that. It will not go off. Go put it on the side, leave it three or four hours, let it get to room temperature, let it get to room temperature, then preheat your oven, put it in a preheated oven. And I'd be putting that in a preheated oven, personally, for my taste, because I like it pink, for about an hour and 10 to an hour and 20 minutes. But a good way to check if your meat's cooked through, or how it's cooked, or when it's cooked, if you haven't got these fancy utensils that show you, is dead easy. Just put two knives down, like that. Put them in, open them. And if the juices come up clear, then it's cooked thoroughly. If it comes up with a bit of blood in it, it's cooked a bit pink. You know, use your love, don't be frightened to have a pick and poke around it. It won't make no difference. And if I were slicing that, I'd be going straight across, cooking, cutting it that way, which is against the grain of the sirloin. Everybody will tell you do that. I, me personally, I think with this one, because I've strung it for you, it's nice and firm. Slice it across, or maybe, if you wanted to, you could cut it in half and then slice it that way, which is going with the grain of the sirloin. Now, one thing that you could do, if you wanted to, this is like what they do in America quite a lot, and I know those Brits have quit pretty set in as well, but that's why I'm doing these different joints because we just have meat and gravy, don't we? Especially in Yorkshire. <laughs> but uh, you could put, you could encrust that on outside with some uh, brown sugar. And what that'd do is it'd give you a bit of a sweetness going through the saltiness, going through the whole grain mustard and into the beef. Personally, that's what I do. I like it, but you know, we tend to not mix gravy and dessert in Yorkshire, but it's, you know, to me, a bit of brown sugar on the outside just gives it that bit of extra taste. You could smear a bit more whole grain mustard on if you wanted, but when you buy one of these, this is exactly how it come. You know, I've done my bit with it there. If you want to add brown sugar, if you want to add some whole grain mustard or maybe some English mustard, that's up to you. In my opinion, this will serve four people and leave enough for sandwiches because we like that up here, us northerners. We like a bit of sandwiches after Sunday dinner, about an hour and a half after. <laughs> but, uh, or if you want to finish the joint, I think it'll serve eight, easy, all day long. That'll be a premium quality piece of meat. Treat it with a bit of respect, cook it properly, put a bit of heart and soul into it, and you'll impress your friends without, trust me, I'm telling you, stand on Phil. And it's only 25 pound, you know, it's a 25 pound add-on, but you've got a lovely, top quality, artisan, crafted piece of meat that, in my opinion, is the perfect Sunday roast.